Otherwise, I'm uh, happy to introduce another Mozilla Tech speaker. Um, we'll see a bit, uh, the, the, I think pretty much all of us think the browser is now the platform, but then the excitement is you have a ton of different browsers. So if you want to make code that change the behavior of the browser more than just a page, how can you do that across browsers? Awesome. That's my talk. Morning, everyone. So everyone can hear me at the back, right? Perfect. Yeah, that's a mic check. We have been doing the whole morning, right? <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, that's me. Whenever I go back to my home country, India, I miss food, you can see already. So today, um, I'll be talking about cross-browser extensions. What are cross-browser extensions? OK, what are extensions? Anyone? So here's the thing. Um, I'm a super lazy speaker. I mean, I sleep while talking. I have a history of that. So just in case if I sleep, you have to wake me up with your answers. So once again, what are extensions? Anyone? Plugins for browser. Sorry? Plugins for browser. Plugins for browser. Anyone else? OK, let's keep it simple. Anything that extends the functionality of a browser is a browser extension, right? Browsers are coated with like um, bare minimum requirement. Maybe the tools which your developer needs may not be needed by a designer, or a designer needs a tool which are not uh, needed by a developer, right? So browsers are coated with minimum. So basically, one size that fits all. But your browser, when um, okay, let me put it like this. Browsers are cool. Everyone agree to that? Perfect. So when it's suit up with extensions, it becomes a superhero. Right? So it's, it's not a new thing. Like since the browser, browser extensions are there. Why we are talking in this conference about, in this specific room about browser extensions? I know you will kill me for this because JavaScript. <laughs> so. These extensions are made just using JavaScript. And um, how many of you use any form of extension or any extensions, maybe Chrome, Firefox? Almost everyone. So any links, which, which extension you use the most? At Blocker. No scripts. Anyone else? HTTPS everywhere. I love that personally. Empty cache. Empty cache. Cool. We have ample of examples. So just to have a revision, what an extension can do. Um, this is like my, one of my favorite tools because I am super bad at it. If I write my um, call for paper without this, surely everyone will reject it, right? So this is a savior tool for me, like people who are, who are really bad at grammar. Maybe block your ads and trackers. Anyone know this extension? Ghostry. Maybe using for secure browsing. Does anyone know about um, Facebook containers? Perfect. If you don't know after this talk, give it a try. Maybe better new tab experience. Like whenever you open a new tab, you may not like the stock things. Maybe you want some news. Maybe you want to do some um, search. Maybe you want a better UI. All that can be done via extension. Maybe manage passwords. Precisely. Anything you want with your browser. How to do that? Let's get started. This is an interesting part. I am just sugarcoating it. It's the most boring part of this talk because it requires some bootstrap coding. So this is a structure of uh, extension, how it looks like. It is a manifest file. It has some components like content script, background script, page action, browser action. Yeah, these are fancy words. I'll make it simple for you guys. <laughs> So manifest.json is the entry point, uh, entry point of the um, extension. Whenever you create an extension, you have to tell the, oh, no worries. Um, whenever you um, create an extension, you have to tell the browser what all your extension can do, what permissions it requires, um, and all the metadata like name, description, version. So these kind of stuff we put in manifest.json. Second thing is content script. So, um, there are times which, when you need your extension to do, um, inject some script into the browser code. For example, um, you want to read all the anchor tags in the page. So you need to put some JavaScript code into the page. So this is the thing which is used to do that. These scripts directly in, um, is injected into the 
um, code, DOM. Second thing is background scripts. Yeah, that ex uh, that executes in background. So what happens is um, content scripts are page dependent. Like for example, you open Google.com and you want to do something on Google.com, so that can be done via content script. But for example, you know um, you want something to do when the Google.com opens right before opening. You have to put the code in background script. This is page agnostic. Like it runs whenever the browser runs. It's not running only when your page opens or a specific page closes. But this runs throughout the browser time. Page action and browser action. So um, these are pretty utility buttons, like toolbar buttons, whenever you want to um, give a functionality. For example, um, the first one is an example of an IP finder. So whenever a URL is open, um, you can click and click that small button and find what IP of uh, what is the IP of the domain and where it is hosted and that kind of stuff. This is pretty page specific. Uh, whenever a page is loaded, um, that depends on that icon. The second one is browser action. It's more generic. I mean, um, whenever you click that, maybe opening a pop-up, maybe executing some action, maybe injecting a content script, or maybe sending signals to Java, um, background JavaScript. These are options page. The, the next thing is option page. So option page is basically, um, this is a method how you put preferences in, a, in your extension. Um, if you want to give users facility to maybe change the color of your add-on or maybe um, some timing of uh, doing events, this is a place where you can do that. And this whole thing is just HTML page. This supports CSS and JavaScript together. Whew, that's what, that was a boring part, trust me. Um, web extensions APIs. So whenever I say or anyone say API, what comes in your mind? Anyone? Contract. Contract. Interesting. Sorry? True. <laughs> but this time, I mean, I can say this comes directly from MDN. How many of you know MDN? I suppose JavaScript developers, almost everyone know MDN. Okay, MDN is Mozilla uh, Developer Network. It has like it's a wiki of all the JavaScript basically. So these are the APIs um, which are built on top of browser features and has a native JavaScript um, uh, interface where you can just plug in some options and do the actions. So what basically I'm saying is, um, with JavaScript you are touching the browser's code. Like for example, as simple as throwing a notification, it's a native br <coughs> native browser action. But you are uh, doing that thing with JavaScript, um, with this method, uh, web extensions APIs. So there are ample APIs. We'll see some of them. Notifications API. This is my favorite because this is like most straight for straightforward. You put some um, options and it throws a notification. Probably this is uh, more of self-explanatory. Type basic. So basically, it says like basic includes a message, a title. Um, there are like image types. Just notification will have images. So it just does a simple task: browser dot notification dot create. Basically, it creates a notification which has icon on that icon dot png. It has a title, my extension, and with a message, my notification. Browser action API. So I just explained what uh, what the browser action is. So the interesting thing is, like whenever you click a browser action, you have a pop-up, right? Like you guys have seen that whenever some add-ons have, whenever you click the toolbar button, there's a pop-up. So how many of you know that that pop-up content is just a plain HTML page? Anyone know that? Now you know that. It's a plain HTML page which executes with JavaScript and CSS. Um, you can do anything there, like write anything, um, execute anything, maybe fetch APIs, maybe um, what to say, like for example, live ticker. Let's say you want a, there's a FIFA match and you want a live score, you have an API for that. You can just call from on that page and whenever you click that button, that score will be displayed here. It's as simple as that. There are more to that, like for example, you, put, um, you want to communicate to background script, throw a notification, let's say. So you can um, listen to that action on click, and okay, sorry. Um, listen to the action on on click, and the action can be done. There are sometimes like in some uh, extensions you may have seen like um, there are small badges uh, next to the browser action. 
So that can be dealt by like set bash tag, uh, set bash text, whatever you want to set, you can set there. Tabs API, this is an interesting API. So um, this gives you full power of tab. For example, whenever, um, let, let's say uh, combine two browser action and tabs API. Whenever you want to open few tabs on click of a button, you can use that API. Whenever you want to do some um, action on close of any tab or maybe on opening of any tab, this can be an action. Um, I will give you an example, like let's say um, you are making an extension um, which keeps a track how many times you open a Facebook page. So this can be your friend, like um, on activated, I'm not sure if it's visible at the back or not, but this says browser.tabs.onactivated.addListener. So basically you can put a function, JavaScript function, whenever the tab opens and you can count uh, like how many number of times Facebook page has been opened. So this, um, this is a very naive example, but I'm just giving an idea how this can be used. New tab API. So this API just lets you to do um, one single thing, change your new tab page. So you can create an uh, HTML page, uh, maybe anything you want, maybe just simple text, and plug it here. So this, this tab will replace the new tab, the stock new tab, and put your HTML page into this. Okay, one more to go there. This is the most interesting API which I feel. Do anyone know about this web request API? It was in news recently, so probably. Okay, so this, this makes you like, you know, super powerful as a extension developer. Like, as the name says, it's like a um, uh, whole soul what to say, owner of the web request. This API lets you to modify a web, a web request in any way. Basically, it has multiple events, on before request, on send headers, on, on before send headers, on send headers, on header received, on respond headers, on completed, and on before redirect, on auth, OAuth required. So um, precisely what, um, to make it simple, I'm gonna say like this, with this web request, um, you can, let's say, change the response header, change the request header, maybe block the request, maybe redirect from domain A to domain B, maybe stop the OAuth requirement. So let me put back this. I think all of you know ad blockers, right? Everyone has been using ad blockers. Do you think this API can be used to make an ad, ad blocker of your own? Right? This is the same exact API which is used to make every entry tracking, every ad blocker. So this is a bit powerful. So as one of my favorite movies, dialogue with great power comes great responsibility, right? So please and please use this responsibility. The funny part is, um, the funny part is, um, every extension which is made is reviewed by reviewers manually and um, programmatically both in Chrome Store and Firefox Store. So enough of blabbering. Like uh, I told you, like this is like really, I mean, you know, boring part for me also, and I I suppose for you also because as a as a listener, I really am not into listening all the things. Like it's just long. Where's the code? Show me the code, please. Show me the code. So. Um, I have two very silly, silly, very, very silly errors, but just to explaining the idea how it can be done. First, first one is Link Painter. By the name, can you guess what it does? Sorry? Makes the links stand out. It makes the links stand out, but um, I'm a really bad designer, so it will be really bad. <laughs> so don't have your hopes high. So this is a code. Basically, these are two files. This is one file. And this is other file. So can someone tell me which is this file called? Manifest JSON, exactly. So it has some like name, version, manifest version, description, icons, and the important part is content script. Remember I told content script few moments back what it does? It injects JavaScript into the current page, right? So this is the format of content script. Everyone at the back can see this, right? Perfect. Um, so there are two parameters, like first is matches. So matches is for like, if you want to inject this JavaScript at every page, or maybe um, specific regex pattern, let's say, I just want to do it on google.com domains, or maybe just on facebook.com domains. 
So for being as lazy I am, I just put all URLs like, hey, please do it on all URL. And what to do? Just uh, inject this JS file here. And this is my JS file. Probably if the mirroring works properly, I will just, cool. Here's my link painter. Here's my manifest.json. This is the content script. And content script says, oh, it's really hard to coordinate together. Can we do a quick word wrap? Does it even help? OK, nothing, sorry. So uh, what I'm doing is very simple. I'm getting all the anchor tags and just putting the style background red. I mean, yeah, that's my designer self. So sorry for that. So um, this is manifest. So on all mozilla.org domains, this um, script will be injected. And it will do whatever is written. Let's try together. Hopefully, this works. So uh, to install temporary add-ons, we have to go to this specific page about debugging. And we can just load temporary add-on. So I created link painter. I'll give path to manifest.json. And here's my link painter. It has a small icon, which I just copy. And this is the name. And like, let me do two things. First, I'll open if the internet allows. It's google.com. Nothing happened. It's fine. Because we put a regex for just mozilla.org. Let's open mozilla.org. Can you see a bit changed view of this? So this is, I know this is very lame, very simple example. But my idea is to make you understand like how easy it's injecting a JavaScript into the page. And when you can inject a JavaScript into the page, you can do wonders. So every JavaScript developer in, my, in this room, do you agree to that? Like if you can inject a JavaScript into a page, you can do almost anything. Everyone? So that's web extension for you, right? Let's try another one. This is an example of something using um, content script. And I'll just remove this and reload the page just to make sure like all the things are gone. Now the second one which I really like is, so I just created as, this as a fallback, like just in case if internet is not working or some that kind of stuff. So this goes like this. Um, second one is word counter. I bet you cannot guess what this add-on can do. <laughs> OK. Oh, I must hurry to say. So just I will plug into the code, maybe, so that we have a better idea. Else they will throw me out of the place. So this is a manifest. This is the background script. I'm telling background script.js. Here is an interesting thing, permissions. Um, the permissions are required for some of the APIs, or maybe all of the API, uh, most of the APIs. So this will be um, notified whenever you install an extension, like, uh, like in your mobile app, right? So you will be have, having a notification like, hey, this add-on wants to um, access your context menu and notification. So do you agree? If you agree, then only this will be installed. Sorry for my pace. I'm getting a bit <laughs> faster. Hopefully, that can match. So this, in very simple example, I'm doing three steps. First thing is I'm creating a menu. In the context menu means the right-click menu. Um, don't worry. It's available online. I'll just share the slides. So uh, I'll create a menu. And give the context, like, hey, I want the data from selection. Whatever I select, give me the data to the um, function. So whenever there is a context menu on click, I'm adding a listener, count me. Yeah, don't judge me on my variable names, you know. So on count me, I'm doing simple thing. I'm getting selection text, because I got the selection context here. And with that selection text, I'm trimming and splitting and counting the number of words. And I'm just creating a notification, like, hey, total words this, words.length. And total character selected text dot length. Sounds simple? Cool. Let's see it in action before my time runs out. OK. So let's. This is the word counter. This is manifest.json. OK. Uh, let's go here. Like, this is a background script, so it runs page agnostic anywhere. So here is your first step. You can see the context menu entry. And when I click it, you have a notification there. Total words, total characters. 
Make sense? But, 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 we started the talk like cross-browser extensions, right? This is all about Firefox. Did you notice? Yeah. Then ask, you know, I told you, like, I sleep, like, please, I totally forgot. So let's try this on Chrome. Does it work? I still have maybe two or three minutes. Um, let's test this quickly. Two minutes. Extensions. Um, one thing we need to make sure developer mode is on so that here we can load unpacked. And uh, it's Link Painter. Link Painter is fine. Let's go to Word Counter. Let's open it. And let's open, let's say, any website. Seriously? Sorry, I'm. <laughs> let's. Here's our entry. And when we click it, here is our next, um, notification. Right? Thank you. Thank you. So there are a few things left, probably one minute left. So I'll quickly wrap this up. Security, I told you that whenever you put a permissions, you will get a prompt that, hey, these sites want to do this. Like, for example, this Grammarly, I don't want to access, access your data for all websites. Yeah, that kind of stuff. If you cancel, it will not install. If you add, it will install. Debugging, I showed you how to debug. Uh, debugging, basically, why we say debugging? Because whenever you install, whenever you install an add-on or extension in Chrome or Firefox, these guys are looking at me like, please hurry up! I will throw you <laughs> out of the stage. So um, you have to go through do, uh, through this process because you can install only signed or um, authorized add-ons or extensions in Chrome, Chrome and Firefox. There are some tools, web extensions or tech, where you can start learning. This is how you publish an add-on. <laughs> These are some resources. And thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Hopefully, yeah. I don't have time for questions. So do I have? Yeah. If you have any questions, I propose to discuss uh, outside. Sorry, guys. I mean, I'm <laughs> available outside. You can just grab me there. And thank you a lot for the talk. It was very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ludovic. I'm sorry to to send the email to be sure you are here. Yeah. Okay. I have a quick thing to make. I have some goodies. I'm putting it outside. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's was odd. I have some goodies. I'm putting it outside this room. If someone is interested, please grab it. Or maybe I can just keep it here if you don't lazy to me. Are you sure? Okay. While you set up. Please compact, like uh, hard drive. Please, uh, I see here a uh, place. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Ouais. Bon, mais je, je pense qu'on va être en plein toute la journée, à mon avis. Ouais, ouais. Ouais, ouais, ouais bah attends, on va les laisser s'installer. <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for breaking your all the things. Yeah, 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 no, don't worry. Okay. Come on. Uh, okay, three last ones. T'as installé le machin? Ouais. Et en fait, ils ont complètement automatisé la caméra, donc... Attends, je vais aller voir Alice.